based on the example we gave of a falling object, let's try to introduce the idea of an instantaneous rate of change. When you state the definition of the instantaneous rate of change, it sounds so trivial that it's almost circular. The instantaneous rate of change of a function at a value x equals a tells you how quickly the function is changing at that value at x equals a. And the name comes from the fact that x equals equals a represents a single instant versus average rates of change, which are defined on intervals with an infinite number of points in them. Let's talk informally about finding instantaneous rates of change. To approximate an instantaneous rate of change, we use average rates of change. In particular, the instantaneous rate of change of a function at a is approximated by the average rate of change of the function on the interval from A to B. How good is this approximation? It depends on B. The closer B is to A, the better this approximation. However, although B should be close to A, if we want a good approximation, B cannot actually equal A. And why is that? Well, it's because this average rate of change, remember, is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. If b equaled a, this would be a division by zero error. So summarizing and writing down what I said, the closer B is to A, the closer the average rate of change on this interval, which is given by this fraction, is to the instantaneous rate of change at A. Before we end this video, let's rewrite to this fraction a little. If we have an interval from A to B, we could think of that as the interval from A to A plus H, where H is some number. For example, with the interval from 2 to 2.013 is the interval from 2 to 2 plus 0 0.013. We can always rewrite an interval like this as this, if we care to. So let's just take this formula and stick A plus H in place of B. 
here. So if we let this right end point approach this left end point, and the left end point is A and the right end point is A plus H, that means we're letting H approach zero. This average rate of change formula with A plus H in for B turns into this, and the closer H gets to zero, the closer this fraction gets to the instantaneous rate of change at A. Okay. 